This problem is exactly similar to finding the longest common substring between two given strings. But why do I say that? Let us quickly find it out. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see how you can convert this problem to the actual problem of finding a longest common substring. Going forward, we are going to do a quick review about how we used to solve that problem and then as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's quickly make sure that we are understanding this problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given two integer arrays and you have to find just the length of the maximum subarray that appears in both of them, correct? So let us look at one of the sample test cases. In my first test case, I have these two arrays, right? And if you notice, these two arrays have this subarray, 3, 2, 1. This is common, right? And in fact, this is the longest subarray that you can find. So what is its length? Its length is 3. So for your first test case, you need to return 3 as your answer. It is also important that when you're selecting these elements, all of the elements have to be contiguous. They must appear one after the other. You cannot skip an element, right? Similarly, let us look at our second test case. In our second test case, once again, I have two arrays, right? Now, if I ask you, what is the length of the longest contiguous subarray? Then you can say that, hey, I can find these four elements in both of my arrays, right? So what if its length? Its length will be four. So this is how the problem statement looks like. If you feel that you have understood it even better now, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and see how we can compare it to finding the longest common substring. Once again, I have a sample test case with me. I have these two arrays and I need to find out the length of the maximum contiguous subarray that is common in both of them. So before diving into the solution, just pause for a moment and try to think. What if you assign a certain character to each and every number? What I mean is that, let us say you assign 1 equals to A, 2 equals to B, 3 equals to C and so on. Now just try to substitute each of these integers by these characters and see what your problem translates into. As soon as I replace all of them, my first integer array, this will translate to A, B, C, B, A, right? You can say that A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, B is 2 and A is 1 again. Right? So I got my first string. Similarly, you can translate your second subarray also. And this becomes something like CBADG. Now, what do you have to do in this? In your original test case, you had to find a subarray that is contiguous and has the maximum length. So right now, this was your answer, right? 3, 2, 1. Just notice these two strings. Once again, you are given two strings and you just have to find out the length of the longest common substring. And what is it? If you've noticed closely, CBA, this is the longest common substring, right? And what is its length? Its length is also three. So you can say that this problem translates exactly into finding the length of the longest common substring. So that is why I keep on emphasizing that this problem is exactly similar. If you're not aware how you find the length of the longest common substring, I would highly, highly recommend you to pause this video right over here and watch my original video on finding the length of the longest common substring. You can find the link in the description below because we will be using the exact same concept and come up with a solution to this problem as well. Let us do a quick review how that solution looked like. We have our sample test case. And what we did is we create a memoization matrix. Now this matrix will hold all of the lengths of the longest common substring that you can find at that particular index. So what we basically used to do is for each of these places, you will populate them according to two rules. The first rule is that if both row and column characters are different, you just put a zero in the matrix. What does that mean? It means that if you have to fill up this cell, look at the row and look at the column. They both are different. So in this cell, I will write down a zero. Similarly, you keep moving ahead. 
look at this cell now. Both the row and column are different. So you will once again write down a zero over here. Move on to the next cell. You move here, check its row and column. This is three and this is three. They are the same. When both of these are same, you have a different rule. If they are same, just look at the value that is directly at the top left of this cell and add a one to it. Right now, you do not have anything over here because this is your first row. So you simply write down a one over here. Similarly, just using these two rules, you will keep on populating your matrix and then you will come up with a solution. Let us try to do and see what happens. So for this cell, three and two both are different. So I write down a zero. For this next cell, three and one both are different. So I will write down a zero here. Move on to the next row. You have to fill up this cell. Two and one are different. So write down a zero. Look at this next cell now. Two and two are same. So what do you do? Look at the value that is available at the immediate top left. That is a zero and add a one to it. Once you do that, you will write down a one over here. Look at this next cell now. Two and three are different. So simply write down a zero. Come to the next cell now. Two and two are same. So what do you do? Look at the value that is at the top left. That is one. And add a one to it and write it down in your new cell. So this value becomes two. Similarly, move on to your next cell. Two and one are different. So write down a zero over here. Just this way, you will keep on populating all of these values. I'm going to do it, but try to do it as an exercise on your own. This is how you fill up your entire memoization matrix. And now to find out the length of the longest common substring, or in this case, the length of the longest common subarray, you scan your entire matrix once again and look at the highest value that you found. The highest value that you found is three, right? So three becomes your answer. And this is the length of the longest common subarray, correct? Three, two, one. Further, if someone asks you, okay, you have told me the length. Also tell me what was this longest common subarray? Then it is very simple. Just start from this highest value and keep going to top left until you find a zero. And then as you're moving up, just look at all of these values. The first number was one. Then the second number was two and the third number was three. Write it down in opposite direction. So you get three, two, one. And this is your longest common subarray. Just in a certain scenario that you have two different subarrays that have the longest length, then you can return any one of them. And that is why I say this problem is exactly similar to finding the longest common substring. Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample test case where I have two arrays that are passed in as an input parameter to the function find length. Moving on with the dry run. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create a memoization matrix. And if you remember, the size of this matrix depends upon the input size of the two integer arrays. So this will define how many rows and how many columns that you have. So as soon as this matrix is initialized, all of these values will be zero, right? Especially the first row and the first column. All the other values will be zero as well, but I have to work upon them. So I'm just leaving them empty for now. Proceeding ahead with a dry run. What do we do? We initialize a max variable that is going to store that, hey, this is the length of the maximum sub array that I have found. Now we start our for loop, which will iterate over each of these cells in your matrix, right? Notice that we start both of these loops from one because I have to populate this part of the matrix. The first row and the first column are actually just helper rows because you have to look at the top left value, right? So while going through each of these cells, what do you do? You compare if both the number at the row and the column are same. If they are the same, just copy the value from top left and add a one to it. So when you're populating for this particular cell, these two values are not the same. So technically what happens is this value remains a zero. 
For this next cell once again, you see 2 and 3. They are not the same. So this value will also remain 0, right? Look at this next cell now. These two values are the same. So what do you do? You copy the value from top left. So you look at this value and then add a 1 to it. So this value eventually changes to 1. Moving ahead once again, 3 and 2 are not the same. So this value also remains a 0 and this is also a 0. For your next row, 2 and 1 are different. So this is a 0. 2 and 2 are again the same. So what do you do? Look at the value at top left and add a 1 to it. So this becomes a 1. For the next cell, 2 and 3 are different. So this value will be a 0. Move ahead. Look at this cell now. 2 and 2 are the same. So what do you do? Look at the value at top left and add a 1 to it. So I already have a 1 over here and, and adding a 1, it becomes 2. So I write down a 2 here. Similarly, you can go ahead and populate your entire remaining matrix. As you are populating your matrix, just keep a track of the maximum value that you have found. You will see that you will find a maximum value of 3. And as you are done iterating your entire matrix, just return this value. So you can safely say that 3 will be returned over here, right? The time complexity of this solution is order of m cross n, where m and n are the lengths of the two given arrays. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of m cross n, because you need that space to have your memoization matrix. Also notice that if you want to trace what was the actual longest subarray, just look at this value. You will find 1, then go back, then you will find 2, then go back, then you will find a 3, then go back and you find a 0 and that is where you stop. This will be your longest common subarray, right? I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you are solving problems in general, just make it a point to write down some of the test cases and try to come up with, okay, this will be my sample solution. It could be possible that you will be able to see some of the problems that you have already solved, but this problem is given in just a different format. At the same time, also make sure that you are understanding all the nitty gritties of the problem. For example, in this problem, instead of a contiguous subarray, if you were asked that, okay, what are the subarray? The elements are not contiguous then this problem becomes entirely different and its approach is very different. So always make sure that you are taking care of all of these facts. While going through this video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other such problems which use the same concept of a longest common substring? Tell me everything in the comment section below and it would be also helpful for anyone else who is watching the video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. This really keeps me going. Keep letting me know what other problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.